check it out. So we're here. Today's the day back in Andy's shop. What do you see? What do you see? Oh, these are all different types of mushrooms. So these are disco somas. And these are the fun bag up. What about a clean shrimp? Oh, yes. I would love a shrimp. Let's do that. Yes! We're getting all sorts of stuff today. And you're yelling at you see them all? See ya, bud. What is going on, Kaferos? Welcome back to another video here. I'm starting off at the front of Andy's shop here. We're at the aquarium shop. Tommy is inside, as well as my buddy Chad Smith. As you read by the title and thumbnail of this video, we get our first coral for a 143 gallon saltwater tank. We've been working on this thing for months. As you know, we went and got hermit crabs. Roll the clip. I don't see anything. Yeah. Also some snails. So this is a predatory well. You definitely don't want these. These will eat other uh, snails, clams, things like that. Their radula is evolved to burrow through shells. Now with hermit crabs in the tank, we've had this thing cycling for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. And we still have fish in quarantine, getting ready to go into the tank this upcoming month, most likely. Yeah, and more to come at the beginning of next month as well. As you can see, Tommy's mobile is here. Whenever you see this, you know it's gonna be a very informational video. Tommy's very informational, he knows a lot. He's got a degree in marine biology, so be prepared, turn your listening ears on, and definitely listen up to what he's got to say. He's gonna teach you all about some corals that would work good in my tank, and probably, most likely, we're gonna run into ones that don't work good in my tank, so be ready, enjoy this video. Here we go, let's introduce the boys. Chad What up? Smith. Tommy. Paul. <laughs> Every time, Paul. <laughs> so we're here, today's the day, back in Andy's shop and um, we're ready for simple corals, right? Nothing crazy. Nope, beginner corals. Beginner corals is what we're here for today. And Tommy is gonna show us around. Let's, I guess, head over to that aquarium right there where all the coral is. So because your tank is new, yep. it's likely to go through some spikes in nutrients. Mm -hmm. um, it's also likely to go through certain algae phases. And so we wanna make sure that the first corals that we're putting in there are hardy and they're not gonna be affected by these spikes in nutrients or by the algae that might overgrow them. So because of that, we're gonna stay away from more difficult to keep corals like this, Symphilia. Symphilia, not getting today corals. This thing is beautiful. It's easy to keep. And the only reason why I would say to hold on that is that those are like $200 corals. Holy moly. So let's make sure <laughs> everything is doing well. And then we'll get to those corals. So that is not a no, but we just want to wait on it because it's an expensive coral and the fact that we could buy it and then it doesn't work out, that would be horrible to spend 200 bucks and watch it. So also the Euphelias. Yep. These are people's, uh, a lot of new hobbyists really, really want to put different Euphelias in their tank. Hammers, torches, frog spawns, octo spawns. Uh, and so Euphelias, if they get injured, um, a lot of times they'll lose the whole head. And so if you get an algae bloom and you yeah. have to scrub algae away from the coral, it's getting smothered, you might injure it, and then you could lose the coral. So even though they're technically hardy, I do recommend waiting until you've gotten past their algae phase to make sure there's no problem. I'm telling you guys, you're gonna learn something today. Every time we're with the man himself, Tommy here, you, we all learn together as a group. Well, I've, you know, I've made a lot of these mistakes myself. And everyone's gonna make mistakes, mm -hmm. you know? It's how you learn. You gotta make the mistakes in order to learn. I've made many mistakes in my past. Really, they come in two different growth forms. You have branching and you have walling. So the branching hammers, each polyp is on its own stock. Uh, so those are the hardiest ones because you can damage one head and you won't lose the whole colony. Uh, the other form, it's all one continuous skeleton. Yeah. So if it gets injured, there's a chance that you lose the whole thing. So for beginners especially, starting with the branching euphilias is the yeah. way to go. Makes sense. Okay, so down the road, this is something we're definitely going to be doing in our aquarium. Right here, you can see a colony. Oh my gosh, yeah. Wait, that's what it'll be? Yes. Oh my gosh, that is sick. That's so dope. Now, I hope this blue filter is not too much for uh, the lens here. I put a filter on the end of my lens to try and make it a bit better. Without this, it's really bad. Mushroom corals, it's very simple. Yep. Even and, the name is simple. And mushroom corals technically aren't corals, they're corallomorphs. Yeah. Um, separated by some like 560 million years of evolution. But these are all different types of mushrooms. So these are discosomas. 
Disco Somas. Disco Somas. The Those name is man. The fastest growing of the mushroom corals. So with these, we actually need to be careful where we place them because they can overgrow the other corals in the aquarium. This is Redactus indocinensis, the hairy mushroom. Oh. You see how? Yeah. Well, yeah, I like that. That's cool. And that's these too. These are Redactus. These are, yeah. these are little. So you can actually cut a piece of the coral, put it on frag plug. Mm -hmm. A frag plug. I knew there was a name for it. And it'll just grow from there. So a lot of people that actually produce coral make a lot of money. Yeah. Like grows them big, cuts them into like 20 different pieces, and then he sells the little pieces. Yeah. And my employee Chris does that too, Beauty Below Corals. Yeah. And they don't stop growing, by the way. That little one will then grow, and you can cut that one up and make money. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. In fact, so all corals except for plate corals yeah. that we know of will continue to grow until something kills them. So they'll live forever. Really? As long as they're properly And what is that called again? What coral? The play coral. They go the play corals. They go through senescence. So they'll live, you know, 10, 15 years and then die to make room for baby plates to settle on their skeletons. That's sick. So it'll just continuously grow. So, so another option would be this one. These are recordia mushrooms. Yeah. So this is actually a Florida local coral. It's one of the few Caribbean corals that you can get. Um, and recordias are a great choice for a beginner coral. They're super hardy. Um, they grow really well. They have kind of interesting... You see how the... Oh, I made yeah. it close up. Yeah, it closed up, but still. Yeah, you know, I know what you're talking about. And they come in all different colors. Orange, green, blue, purple. Pinks. I'm gonna need your decision help when I get the when I get to make this decision. All right, we're gonna have a couple to pick from. This looks pretty over here. Look at all these different colors here. Wow, that's beautiful. Can I point something out? Actually, you can 100%. All right, so this coral right here. Yep. That's ORA's Kelly Green Samacora, and that coral was originally collected April 1994. It's been in the hobby for 26 years. If only I could have had you on my side during math class. <laughs> I would have freaking aced that class. Um, or history. History. <laughs> or marine biology. We had yeah, marine exactly. biology too. Oh, you guys had marine biology? We did. Me and Chad actually went to high school together That's before right. I dropped out. <laughs> yeah, but, you did leave me but in there. marine biology was one of my classes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so these are pally those. So pallies are kind of bigger than zoanthids, but they're very similar. Oh, those care. are pretty from above. A lot of the pallies grow really quickly and you can trim algae off of them pretty well if that ends up being an issue. So that's a good beginner coral. Captain Jerks. Yep. Those are cool. I would definitely put in a Sarah Spiculator. So color wise, it's not the most impressive. Yeah. But it adds a lot of texture to the tank, a lot of movement, and mm -hmm. it's a very easy coral to keep contained. Okay. So why don't we bag up one of those? They don't even know really what that looks like yet, so that'd be kind of cool to wait and show them. And then uh, mushrooms. So we got those ones right there so far. And then over here, we got something uh, over here. I don't know which one we're getting exactly yet, but as you can see, Tommy has picked our first one. Look at them close up so fast. Mm -hmm. This is a uh, aquaculture too. That's an ORA part. There we go. It's our first coral ever. Getting bagged up to go home. Kind of a good feeling after waiting so long. Like months and months and months of, of work. Make sure you drop a like on this video because we will be back for more. How could you not like Tommy? Look at him. Look at Tommy. Hey Tommy. <laughs> I just want, I want one coral in my life. Inspiration of Nemo. Tommy, we need to get an, an, an enemy. <laughs> when, can I, when can I get an, an, an enemy? Can you repeat Six that for long. me? An, 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 an enemy. Six months. Six months? Oh, Mike's a long time to wait on an, an, an enemy. What do you see? What do you see? Oh my gosh. Can I get that? Yeah. That is cool. The biggest thing with other corals is they need really good plug. Well, my tank has four power heads, so. Yeah, your tank's solid. good to go. You see how, I don't know if it'll pick up, there's like I, a little bit of slime on it. Yeah, it does pick up. Shake it off. Yeah, it's picking up, yep, yep. So they slough their skin off, and that's why you need good flow for them. Aha, uh -huh. so we're getting this sucker too, that's number two. Numero dos, going in. There we go.
That is honestly really dope. That is beautiful. Let me get a good shot on it. Look at that. It's not super bright, but it is really interesting. The camera's doing a great job, I won't lie. Nice. It's very hard to get shots of coral like this. Another one bagged up. He's got a lot of fish in right now, huh? He's a good amount of fish. What do you think about a brittle star? A brittle star? You think we should do it? I'm down. I mean, so you said if the fish die, Fish, cleanup crew. So these are like cleanup insurance. Crew. They can eat much larger uh, pieces of meat than you would expect by looking at it. Uh, and then they'll digest it over time. Instead of you getting a big nutrient spike in your tank, this starfish just gets a meal. Yeah, that's beautiful. I'm down. He's got a little broken leg. He does. That's why they call him brittle stars. So we're doing a brittle star too. Not only are we getting coral today, we're getting a starfish. Well, not like this yet, but we're getting that. Yeah, I recommend these in almost all of my reef tanks. Same thing with the, the Florida fighting conks. Those conks down there? Yep. Should we get some? Uh, yeah. yeah. That would be a great time to put some of those in. There we go. We're going to get some of those too. Today's a big day. Sea cucumber. It's hiding down there. Oh, he's gone pee. The second you take him out of the water. <laughs> oh, no, he's not. No. Maybe Andy's scared out of him. <laughs> he tickles him right <laughs> Andy touched him before and it was like Tsss. What about a cleaner shrimp? Oh yes, I would love a shrimp Let's do that Yes! We're getting all sorts of stuff today Alright, so we got shrimp, sea cucumber, bristle star, and about five corals And those two conch things mm -hmm. What were they called? The Florida Fighting Conch Sweet! I'm gonna come back for you Alright My anemone It's right there the other yeah, the other one. This one's massive. Check this in an anemone. Yeah, size of it. Massive. We are back home at the tank, and with this lighting, it just looks absolutely amazing. So if you haven't watched the other videos prior to this one and you're new to the channel, well, welcome, first of all. Second of all, Tommy came, and this used to be an old freshwater tank. I mean, it was beat up. Redid the entire thing. We got lights hanging up here. Um, I mean, everything from scratch. We got a saltwater tank. Now after weeks of waiting, now is the time we did go out like I mentioned earlier on in the video and got hermit crabs. We got a lot more now. Now as we go through our bags, we have as you see a lot that have been acclimating for the last like 20 minutes. We're gonna start with this one. Tommy's gonna explain what we got. I actually don't even know fully about all we got. Tommy was just grip picking things that he thought would be good for the tank and here we are. So we're back home. First things first, it's I know it's blinding but it'll correct itself. Alright, we're starting with what looks like to be our cleaning shrimp, huh? Like a little cleaner shrimp? Yep, this is a cleaner shrimp. That is a, a beautiful shrimp to say the least. It has eggs. Oh, what? That's oh beautiful. my gosh, it does. So if you look on the belly, you see all those eggs? Wow. Our GoPro is chilling in there, as you can see. He's bringing them over, he's popping the rubber band off, and then scooping a little bit more water into it. So we it. did the temperature acclimation, and now we're acclimating for the water chemistry. We do this with the invertebrates, because they're not in any kind of medication, and there's no diseases that they're going to introduce for the fish. So, two little scoops. Yep. And tie it back up and let it sit for another 15 minutes. Exactly. All right, so you're probably wondering, what, what, what are we doing on that time lapse? Uh, well, I'll let Tommy explain, but to quickly run through it, we're grabbing the bags out of the tank now and putting them into a clear bin. As you can see, he's got a flashlight on it because he's looking for anything specific coming off of what we bought, correct? Exactly. So no matter where you get your corals from, you should always dip them. Dip them in some sort of coral dip. Because uh, the last thing that you want to do is introduce some kind of pest. And I don't know if it's gonna come up in the video, but you can see there's a bunch of copepods swimming around I in the water. I do see that, yep. And those, so. You see, you'll see them move on the camera here. Oh yeah, you see them all? Those are benign. We want those in the tank. Um, but there are other pests that we wouldn't want, like nudibranchs, um, certain types of annelid worms that eat coral. And so this is just a good opportunity to observe your corals look for any weird things that might be coming out. A lot of times you'll get little worms that come out of these holes in the rocks. Pick your corals up, put them back down to kind of encourage the dip to get into all the little hidey holes and nooks in the rock. It's such a cool process because like 
Once again, I've never done anything salt water. I mean, I had that tank over there, which this is the first legit thing that I've ever done salt water, and it's just so incredible to like sit here and not only film it and document it for y'all watching, but like in person, it's just, I'm looking through the camera screen just like as wowed as you are. Thankfully, this is kind of boring so far. But that's a good thing. Andy's yeah. got a good stuff. I used to transship a lot of corals. So I'd bring in, you know, 10 boxes at a time mm -hmm. from Vietnam. And when they're fresh out of the ocean like that, you find some wild, wild stuff. I found bioluminescent worms where you touch them and they create their own light. That is sick. Really, really cool stuff. We are looking good though. But yeah, we're going to do this exact process with the rest of our coral. Do we have any more corals up there? No. Uh, no, just the Oh, four. just that oh, one. Wait, yeah. Have one more. The leather. So we're gonna do it with just the last leather here. And uh, yeah, hopefully everything goes good. We got the GoPro rolling, so uh, I'll see you on that. Oh, we see a notification, oh, who's there? <laughs> All right, let's do this. Nothing came off of them, so. That's good. Andy's got great quality corals. Good job, Andy. Andy's shop's uh, location is down below if you wanna go check him out. Let him know I sent you. It'll be a big help for me. Our first one going in. Now, do you uh, do the same thing? Yes. Put in, okay, so the same exact thing we did to pretty much put all the rocks together, and that's what it does. See how all these rocks are connected? Same thing I'm about to do for these corals. What is up, guys? I'm Chad. Paul is actually behind the tank right now. I'm gonna film from this side, just so you get a double-sided angle. First coral is in. When this thing takes over, just full of corals, it's gonna be insane. Looks good, man. Looks good, it looks, this, this is it, it's amazing. Our first coral, the lighting's so bad on this camera. I mean, I'll just show a GoPro clip. Don't forget, we got a couple more things up in our top left of the aquarium here. Our last coral is going in over here, so that means we'll have one right there, one right there, one right there, one right there, one right there. One right boom, boom, bang. Bang, bang. Corals in the aquarium, officially. I'm stoked. That thing is on this PVC pipe. This is what we do water changes, where we take the water out with this. Um, but yeah, that's just gonna grow all along this. So, and really, things look small now. In a couple hours, these are gonna start opening up, um, all the ones we have. And in a couple months, they're gonna grow, and they're gonna just spread throughout the entire tank. So here's the sea cucumber. There we go. And you should be kind of gentle with these because when they get stressed, their defense response is to literally spit out their guts. Huh. They just eviscerate them. Uh, Interesting. And once they've done that, how cool that is, they to recover. It looks so good. Oh, he's already eating. Is he? Yeah. Yeah, look at him. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, remember, he was trying to in the bag. Yeah. He's probably hungry. That's awesome. That's good. These are some of the sea best cucumber. cleanup crew that you can have. Sea cucumbers, when they eat the sand, they sift out up to 90% of the detritus. So they're super cleaning your sand bed. So we got the sea cucumber, hermit crabs, a shrimp, and a bristle starfish. And two conks. And two conks. So we have a lot of cleanup crew in here so far. The brittle Chad's starfish. getting underwater stuff. Brittle? Brittle. Brittle. The lighting's a bit bright, but the GoPro's definitely getting it. It looks like an octopus to me. That looks so good. Oh my god. See ya, bud. Can he flip himself over and everything? Yes. That's how you tell if a starfish is healthy or not. Uh, oh, there he goes. Yeah. Put him in upside down and you time how long it takes for them to flip. Huh, I never knew that either. Look at him, he moves like an octopus. He does, that is so sick. That is so cool, dude. And you might not see his whole body for a long time after you put them in. You might only see, see the legs. occasional legs. Yeah. yeah. Look at him. There he goes. So long, brother. Two more things. We got the conks and then the shrimp. Look at him. Yep. Goodbye, buddies. So long. Two conks. Two conks are officially in the aquarium as well. So now we got our starfish that's moving. He's on the move our conchs, and our sea cucumber. We have the shrimp. This is what I've been waiting for. We saved the best for last. It's like a little baby. That shrimp is so cool looking. And it's got babies, so we never know. What if we have a bunch of babies? You won't. You need to be careful and not use a net with cleaner shrimps because their arms and antennae are really delicate. They can get caught in nets and then break. So don't use a net. Nope. 
And they are pretty darn friendly. So. Hey, look at him. He doesn't even want to leave your hand. He's cleaning me. That is so sick. Why are they calling him cleaner? God, it feels so weird. <laughs> you never get used to this. Go on your rock, buddy. He's like, no, I want to keep cleaning your hand. There he goes. Oh, right on the GoPro. Dude, that is so dope. Look, he's on the GoPro. He's on the GoPro. Go explore. Look, now he's coming to my hand. Go explore. And there he is. Our cleaner shrimp. Drop a comment on what you like the best out of what we got today. Tommy, what do you like the best out of what we got today? You can pick anything. Ah, it's so hard. I'm, I'm thinking a lot between, of cool things. Between the cucumber and the uh, cleaner shrimp. Yeah, I'm right there with you actually. I'm gonna say between the cucumber and the shrimp, I'm about 50-50 with them. If I can lean any which way, I think I'll go the cucumber. That's a really cool uh, invertebrate for sure. Chad, what do you like the best? The shrimp's back on Chad's hand. Yeah, I'm what, probably what? gonna have to go with my buddy shrimp. <laughs> Yeah, there's always something going on around here. We are finishing up on today's video, but guess what? Fence is done. Hector's here finishing it all up. We got all this trash getting out of here today. We already fixed the fence over there last night, and now this afternoon we are working on this right here. The gate is already installed, as you can see. Check it out. Oh, yeah. Old Daniel Ford, where are the cows at? Where are the cows at? <laughs> we still have a little bit to do with the barn, of course. We're gonna do some more adding on to it, but it's good enough. For now, it's coverage, shade, shelter. Good enough for cows. If that doesn't give you a hint, we, we, we're probably getting our cows tomorrow. So be ready. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Subscribe down below. Hit the like button for me, and uh, I guess I'll see you in the next video, which quite possibly could be that video. Love you all so much. Hopefully you enjoyed that, because every time I film with Tommy, it's an incredible experience. You probably learned a lot. Check out the merch, top link in the description, and I will see you beautiful people tomorrow. Peace out. Watch your finger, Hector. Watch my finger.